All right, so hi there. So we're back in the lanai. You know, we used up our first paint, our first tank of propane the other day, just, you know, extending the outdoor season here. So we got the second tank and we want to just attach it here. And there's a few things that I need to do. But I thought I'd also talk to you about ideology. So we studied liberal versus conservative, and we're going to head into studying our social ideologies, which is authoritarian and libertarian. Now, if you're an AP student, just note that when we talk about this, we flip the social axis. So authoritarian is going to be on top, libertarian on the bottom. Don't let it confuse you too much. But the whole idea with social ideologies is trying to decide you know, what you value more. Do you value the current government system, the current social order, or do you value individual rights and liberties? If you have to make the hard choice of preserving one or the other, are you going to land on preserving the government system or preserving people's freedoms? All right, so that's what we're exploring today. Thank you. And I'm going to try to attach this without blowing myself up. All right, so you can see that we've drawn our political compass on the board again. And uh, in the previous video, we compared the definition of liberal to conservative, conservative, uh, those economic ideologies. Now, just remember on the economic spectrum right here, on this economic scale, you're gonna find issues like minimum wage, you're gonna find issues like taxes or universal basic income. You might even find the issue of equal pay between genders on that economic scale. Today, we're going to talk more about the social moral scale, okay? And we're going to highlight and make visual the differences between authoritarian and libertarian. Now, issues that you would find on the social moral scale, the classic issue, of course, is going to be abortion, but you're also going to find euthanasia, the death penalty, and uh, even like LGBTQ rights are going to be here on the social moral scale, all right? So... Let's get into the definitions. Right, so you should have already read the definitions of libertarian and authoritarian on the Start Here document. But just so we understand each other, I'm gonna go through the criteria that we're gonna compare authoritarian to libertarian on so you kind of understand what I mean. So by government up here, we mean government involvement in your social moral life. How willing are you to let government define for you what is socially correct, what is morally correct, okay? And then social order is the distribution of power and wealth um, status throughout a society between groups. Some groups have power, wealth, and status, and some don't. And now you, that is easier to understand if you think of historically, like 1950s United States. The social order, those groups that had power, wealth, and status are different than the groups today that have power, wealth, and status. So social order can change over time. But it's here because how, will, how much do you value the current distribution of wealth and power in society, society? Is it something that should be valued and preserved? Okay. Then we got traditional values. Now, traditional values are those values that the community holds in common. Okay. So it might be because of tradition or it just might be a shared value throughout the community. Is it something that should be valued and preserved? Okay. And then we get the state. Now, the state is a complex uh, understanding. But for our purposes, all you have to think of it as it is government plus the social order together. Okay, so the current distribution, power, wealth, and status plus our current system of government together. Is it something that should be valued and preserved? Finally, down here, we've got individual rights and liberties. And those you kind of have a basic understanding of. Your freedom of speech, your freedom to practice your religion, your freedom from unlawful search and seizure. Okay, individual rights individual liberties, okay? Right there. All right, so as we progress through the definition of authoritarian and libertarian, we're just gonna give you plus and minuses to get a basic visual understanding of how these two social ideologies are different. All right, so let's take the our understanding of authoritarian, that ideology, and let's make it visual first. So right up here at the top, Government involvement in your social life. 
Authoritarians generally feel very positive about that. They see a role for government in your social life. It's government that's going to define for you what is correct action, okay? And it's going to make illegal what they believe to be immoral actions, okay? So government has a positive role to play in your social moral life. Now, the social order also is going to be something that's valued. An authoritarian looks out at the, the status quo, the current distribution of wealth between groups, the current distribution of status between groups, and says, yes, that is correct. That is how it should be, and it should be preserved. Okay. Now, traditional values, it's the same thing. They see those values that are held in common by the community, and they're like, that is good. Okay. And sometimes, now this is where we get into true, like when we get higher up here in true authoritarian land, is they see that shared value of the community, that traditional value, and they value it so much that they want it to become the law. Okay? So we see the role for government in an authoritarian's life. Okay, so in an authoritarian's life, that shared value, that value we hold in common, it's government's role to take that and make it the law. So everybody has to value that thing. And if they don't, they're going to get punished. Okay, we get down to the state. So this should be self-evident here. Okay, because the state is a combination of the current government structure and the current social order. So do authoritarians value it? You bet they do. Okay, they value the state and they want to see it preserved. Now, this is where we get a little tricky. When we get down to individual rights and liberties, because here's the question is, if government has all this power to preserve the social order, to preserve traditional values, to make them law, to tell you what is morally correct and incorrect, how much freedom do you have? Right, you have less freedom. Now, it's not that authoritarians don't like individual rights and freedom, but they are what we consider they, they're wary of them. Okay? They're, they find them concerning. There might even be a distrust of giving the people too much freedom. Now, specifically, the rights that authoritarians are most afraid of. So if you go to a true authoritarian country, you think, what rights do they immediately limit? You're right, we're talking about speech and press. Okay, because if I have the freedom of speech and if my press is free to report stories of whatever they want, then they have the freedom to attack the social order and say that's not the correct distribution of power. They have the freedom to attack the, the value that we hold in common as a community or that traditional value. They have the freedom to kind of attack and clamor for a change in the state, whether it's the government system or the social order. So authoritarians, like when you get higher and deeper into authoritarian land, they're going to be very wary of individual rights and freedoms. You're going to find that people just have less of them, especially when it comes to speech and press. All right, let's do the same thing with the libertarian ideology. Let's make it visual so that we kind of have that basic understanding. So the first thing, government involvement in your social life, your social moral life. Do libertarians value it? Do they think positively about it or negatively about it? You're right. They think negatively about it. Government should, as much as possible, stay out of your social moral life. The people should have the freedom to decide what is morally correct, what is socially correct themselves. Government should not be making those decisions for them. Okay, so then we get to individual rights and liberties, and you can see how that plays right in there. So how, how do libertarians feel about individual rights and liberties? You're absolutely right, okay? Very positively, okay? The more rights, the better, okay? Because if, if there's less government, then we have more freedom to do what we want. Okay, and that's like the social scale right there. And so they value these individual rights. The people should retain as much freedom as they possibly can. This is where it starts to get tricky here when we talk about shared traditional values. Because if you're just going opposite, you're going to tell me that libertarians don't like shared traditional values. That value of the community, they're going to think negatively about it. Now, we are going to put up a negative symbol up here. But it's not that libertarians actually think negatively about the shared value. If you're a true libertarian, 
should someone else have the freedom to believe something different than myself? You're like, yeah, because we want the people retaining as much power as they possibly can if we're libertarian. However, they are wary. Okay, they find the shared traditional value very concerning, especially if it's shared by a majority of the community. Because at what point exactly do we start thinking negatively about the shared value if we're libertarian? It's when the community is trying to impose that shared value on everybody. So if they start doing this, if they start trying to make the shared value the law, then libertarians are going to be like, whoa now, that's not right. The people need to retain their freedom. Okay, it's the same with the social order, the current distribution of power and status between groups in a society. Again, they're wary of it. Okay, a libertarian probably doesn't care that one particular group has power and status as long as that group is in a majority and is denying power and status and access to wealth to another group. People should be free to, you know, basically get power and status. So they find it very, very wary if the social order itself is being supported by government. Okay, same thing with the state. Okay, so you got that current government system, that current social order together, that's the state. And again, libertarians are going to be wary of that. Okay, the more power government has, the more libertarians are going to be like, you know what, I don't think that's necessarily right. Okay, so there's your basic definitions up here. More government involvement in your social moral life, less government involvement in your social life. More power to government to preserve these things. And then down here, no, less power to government, more power remaining in the hands of the people in the form of rights and freedoms. Bam. All right, so let's check your understanding just by talking about some specific issues. So the issue, let's start with the easy one, abortion. You got two positions on abortion. You got pro-choice and you got pro-life. In the pro-choice position, women should retain the freedom to make that decision to abort a fetus, okay? And then with the pro-life position, it's like, no, that is seen as morally incorrect and government should step in and make that decision, okay? And basically say, no, we are going to preserve the life of the fetus. It's something to be valued. So which one of those is going to be the authoritarian position? Okay, you're right. That is the pro-life position up here, the one that's asking for more government involvement in that social moral decision. And then if pro-choice is gonna be down here, it's a more libertarian position, one that's saying no women should retain that freedom to make the decision for themselves. Same with euthanasia, okay, the right to die, being able to choose when you, you, you know, basically that you're, you have a life-threatening illness and you're tired of life and you want to die, and maybe you get a doctor's help doing it. Okay, if you have the freedom to make that decision, if government's not involved in that decision, that's libertarian down here. If you're saying no, that's morally incorrect, and we need government to ban and make sure doctors don't help patients, you know, choose death, then you're up here in authoritarian land. Okay, now, so death penalty also. Okay, that's to be another one that we could put on here, but let's do one that's a little more complicated. How about immigration? Right? Should people have the freedom to freely cross borders and just live where they want to? Okay? What would be the libertarian position on that? Okay, you're right. You know, that is basically, you know, if, if I'm libertarian and I'm talking about immigration, I'm probably free with people just coming across the border, especially if I'm way down here, right? So way down here in libertarian land, it's like, all right. People should just be able to live where they want. They should have the freedom to do so. Government should not be involved in that. Otherwise, no, if I think we need hard, severe borders and we should limit, you know, you know, baby sh people should not have the power to freely cross borders. I want government controlling the borders. That's a more authoritarian position. Now, the trick, the funny thing with immigration is you can also put it on the economic scale. Should I be free as a business owner to hire the employees that I want? Right, and if you're saying, all right, it would be easier for me and cheaper for me as an employer to hire immigrant labor, especially non-immigrant labor, labor that might be in the country illegally, right? Then 
you know, that's government out of my economic life. That's actually a conservative position, but we would never call it a conservative position in this country. This is where we get a little tricky, right? Okay. And if I'm like, no, okay, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we're going to control who businesses can actually hire. And we're going to have government involvement in that decision of like how you produce goods and services, who you can hire. That traditionally would be considered a liberal economic position. Okay, so it does get confusing because some issues can be both social or economic. All right, so here's the final thing. We're going to kind of put unit one and unit two together, just right here on the social moral scale. So you're probably understanding this. If I get in my car and I start driving north, on the y-axis here and I cross the origin point and I'm getting deeper and deeper and deeper into authoritarian land you should recognize what is getting more and more powerful okay you're right government is getting more and more powerful what is getting less and less and less people's freedoms until I get to a point where government has all the power and people have zero freedom and those types of systems, now regardless of the actual government system, the extent of control over people we would refer to as totalitarian. So I'm hoping you can see this at the top of the screen here. But those systems that exist way up here, we would call totalitarian because of the extent of control government is seeking to have over its citizens. And that's a little bit scary. So I get in my car and I start driving south. Boom, 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 boom. And I cross the origin point and I get into libertarian land and I'm going deeper and deeper and deeper into libertarian land. What is getting less and less? That's right, the power of government is getting less and less. What am I retaining more and more of for myself? My individual rights and freedoms. Until I get to a point down here at the bottom where government has zero power. There's a complete absence of government. The people have retained their freedoms for themselves, all freedom. They have complete freedom to do whatever they want, however they want to do it, whenever they want to do it. And what do we call that? You're right, down here in way libertarian land, that's where we get this. Well, bam, okay? I wrote it up here so you can see it, but that's anarchy down here. And we know, you know, the bad thing about anarchy is that we got no one protecting our, there's no one looking out for our safety except for ourselves. The nice thing about anarchy, complete freedom, right? However, people exercising their complete freedom can lead to an untimely death. All right, there you go. All right, we got one more ideology that we really haven't talked about yet. Now, the definition for this one is it's very helpful to make it visual. So I'm just going to draw it up here. Okay, I like to do is just a... We'll see if I can make this look pretty. There you go. It's just kind of a dash circle in the middle. And this is where I find my moderates. Okay? And the definition for moderate, if you read it, it looks like this. It is something that is in between liberal and conservative and may contain both. It is something in between authoritarian and libertarian and may contain both. The closer you are to the origin point, the more moderate your ideology happens to be. Okay, so that's where we find our moderates. That one's pretty straightforward. That's this. Next video, we're going to kind of move on to a different tool. It's called the flatline political spectrum. And unfortunately, that's the tool that we use here in the United States. People talk about ideology on a flatline. Okay? All right, we'll see you later.